Now, over the last few videos, we've had loads of comments about these Lightroom tutorials that we've been doing. You guys seem to love them. I've got to be honest with you, I love making them. They're really fun to make. I love editing anyway. So do you know what? We're diving back in. This week with a slightly different one, we're going to look at how you can organize your photos in Lightroom. It's a super powerful organizational tool. I didn't use it that way for years, and now I do. Let's look at how. It's as simple as all of that. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh, just a, just a nice fresh photography tutorial. This week, like I say, let's dive back into Lightroom Classic. I've already kind of explained what we're looking at. So let's jump in. Now, I've got Lightroom Classic open here. I've already obviously got my catalog that I've loaded everything up into. We're gonna start our own new catalog so you can see exactly what this looks like. And if you've got a lot of different catalogs, which is exactly how I used to do things, and actually we had a great comment suggesting this video exactly. That's how I used to do things. We're gonna look at how you have one catalog and you just organize everything really nicely within Lightroom. It's so easy, it makes it so easy to find all your photos, to find them edited, unedited, it's just, it's just a really useful way to catalog and be able to instantly, or, or, or pretty much instantly, find any of your photos. So let's take a look. First of all, I'm gonna open a new catalog. So let's go file new catalog. I'm gonna call this catalog tutorial catalog. Brilliant. No worries, somehow managed to mess up spelling catalog, but that's fine. So if you're opening Lightroom for the first time, it'll ask you to create a catalog, or if you want to start from fresh, this is what you're gonna see. You go file new catalog and create a new catalog. It doesn't really matter where you save that catalog because it's not going to be where the photos are stored. It is literally just the catalog, the actual Lightroom file where you access all of the different photos. But the photos live on your computer separately from the catalog. So don't worry too much about where you save it, just make sure it's saved in a nice safe place. Now, of course, when we first start here, we have an empty catalog. And as Lyrum helpfully suggests, you click the import button to begin. That's how we're gonna bring our photos in. But before we even do that, we need to make sure that there's some kind of system in place on the computer for how we're organizing our photos. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I organize my photos on my computer, what I do when I finish a shoot and actually bring the photos onto the computer, how I actually just set that up and then how we bring that into Lightroom. So first of all, I make two different folders. So we've got one folder called raw and one folder called edited. It's probably fairly self-explanatory where I'm going with this, but the raw folder is where we're going to put the photos in when they come out of camera. Right, and we'll go into this in, in more detail in a second. The edited folder is where the photos are gonna go once they've been edited in Lightroom and we export them into the edited folder. So let's click into the raw folder to begin with. Inside the raw folder, I will then have individual folders for each shoot. It's important to set up a naming convention of some kind early on, right? So that it's always fairly straightforward for you to know which folder is which and what means what. So for example, in my actual real folder that I use for all of my photography, I name each folder based on the shoot. So it'll be the camera or the lens that I'm using, because generally speaking, it'll be for review. If it's something else, like for example, forest portraits or harbor portraits, or something like Dirtledore, that'll be based on the location, but it's very straightforward and easy to see what photos are in that folder. You could also use things like the date followed by a name. That way you're always gonna have things in chronological order. But the reason it's important to have this is we are going to import this naming convention into Lightroom when we do that as well. So it's important to have this organized properly here so that it can be organized really well within Lightroom. So you can see here, I've got three folders. I've got tutorial folder one, tutorial folder two, tutorial folder three, you get it. Each of these has some photos in, which are actually just from different cameras. I've just done this for the purposes of this tutorial. But if I had just come back from a shoot, I would plug my camera into my computer, I would create a new folder, name it something, and then bring those photos into that new folder. If we now go back, we can see in the edited folder, I have the exact same naming convention for the folders. So tutorial folder one, two, and three. And then once I've edited the photos in Lightroom, I will export them into the correct folder. So photos from tutorial folder one get edited in Lightroom and then exported into this tutorial folder one 
within the edited folder. So we've got a nice system starting unedited, going through Lightroom, and then going into the edited folder. So it's really easy to always find everything that I wanna find. But once you've set this up, you can really find everything inside Lightroom. And I'm gonna show you how. Okay, so back into Lightroom here, we are going to import our first set of photos. So in the library tab up on the top right, we're gonna come down to the bottom left, click import, and now we have to find that folder. So we're going to find where this is. Now for me, I've got this over here, so let's just navigate to it. And then once you've found it, let's go ahead and click tutorial folder one. It's going to show you all of the photos inside that folder. You can choose to have them all ticked as default. You can also uncheck all of them and then tick individual ones if you want to. I tend to bring them all into Lightroom and I'm gonna sort them from there. So in this case, I'm gonna leave them all ticked and I'm gonna down here click import. Great. Now for the purposes of this video, let's import a second folder so I can show you how easy it is to navigate around in Lightroom. So we're gonna let Lightroom do that. We're gonna come down to the bottom left, click import. And this time we're gonna go for tutorial folder Two. Again, let's click import, leaving everything checked. That's gonna bring everything into Lightroom. Now in the library tab, so up here, the top right, we've got library and develop. They're the two main tabs we're gonna be using. In the library tab, we can now select any of these photos that we've just imported in. But what if we wanna look at the folder that we just imported before this? Well, over on the left here, you can see we've now got two folders available. Tutorial folder one, and tutorial folder two. And as we bring more and more folders in, they're all gonna be listed on the left here. Makes it super easy to go through. And that's why that naming convention is so important. So for example, right now, I can click back to tutorial folder one, and I can see all of the photos in there. Now that is kind of the first layer of organizing your photos, is having within the library things set out into these different folders, nice and easy, right? Let's take a closer look at some of these photos because what about actually choosing which photos we want to edit? We don't necessarily want to edit all of these. These are just every photo. We've just brought them into Lightroom. Let's take a closer look, right? So actually, first of all, I'm going to make these a little bit bigger and I can do that down the bottom right here of this kind of library panel. I can just increase the size of these photos using this slider. And then it's very easy to just go through, right? And I can just use the arrows on my keyboard to go through. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna press the key P, P for pick, to actually indicate to Lightroom that this is a photo I want to edit. So I'm picking it out of the bunch. So for example, here I might press P on this photo. I quite like the way it's shot. Let's say I wanna edit that. I'm gonna keep going through. I'm gonna leave some of these. I'm gonna leave, I like that one. So I'm gonna press P, otherwise I can just go through and you can sort of fairly quickly, I'm gonna press P on that one. You can fairly, I'm gonna press P on that one, you can fairly quickly go through and actually identify which photos you like and which photos you're not fussed about. The nice thing about Lightroom is the photos don't live within Lightroom. There's no storage space going on by bringing them all into Lightroom. You're not ruining anything in terms of storage. They're just on the computer exactly where they were. They remain there even when you edit them. They'll remain there unedited because Lightroom is essentially, it's almost like Lightroom is creating a copy, editing that, and then you export that copy. So the original photo is always undamaged, untouched, available for you to go back. Now I won't go through all of these, but once you're happy with the ones that you've picked, we can go over to the develop tab, which is where we would actually look to edit some of these photos. Let's pick this one as well. And now, okay, we don't wanna see all these photos down the bottom. You can see, you might be able to see that the ones that I've picked have a, have a slight white square around them, but that's not good enough. We want just the photos I've picked. So down here on the right, the bottom right, you can see there's a tab here called filter and a drop down menu. Filters off, let's click that and click on flagged. Now we're within tutorial folder one, only showing the photos that we've flagged. And very helpfully, Lightroom tells you this is six of 48 photos. So there were 48 photos in this folder, and now we've got six of them. So now we can go ahead and edit these photos, no problem. And generally what I'll do is actually, even though I've picked them, I won't always end up actually editing every single one. So what I will do, and let's do a quick something to this photo. Okay, so let's say that I'm pretty happy with that photo and I now want to identify that 
as edited. I'm happy that's a fully completed photo. There's a few options that I've got to do this. I can use the numbers on my keyboard, one, two, three, four, five, and zero, I suppose, to give a star rating to the photo. So for example, for me, I will now give this five stars. That indicates to me that that is edited, that's complete, that's a finished photo. And now I know that that's ready to export to those edited folders. That's not the only option I have for how I want to mark it though. I can also right click on the photo here and I can set things like set color label. I could set a label on here to be, let's say green. And now if I click off that and I click, maybe I click onto another photo, you can see there's a green kind of border around the photo down here when we're looking through the different photos. If I go back to the library, you can see that this photo is now marked with green as well as with the flag to say that it's picked. If I right click on the photo again, you can see I've got options for set color label, set rating, which is the star rating, or set the flag, which is essentially what we're doing when we press P. So you've got a few options there for how you want to actually kind of note to yourself and to Lightroom that you are happy with this photo and you're either done with it or you want to edit it or you want to continue with it. Right, so now when I'm done with it, let's say in this situation, I can right click export. Let's click export here. Let's go ahead and choose the folder we want to export this to. So we're going to find that folder again. Let's find it. So here we are. We've got the edited in the raw folder. We're going to edit it this time. Tutorial folder one, select folder. All good. We can select our settings and we can do that in an entire different video, actually how to export and all that kind of stuff. We're going to do JPEG. I'm going to do the quality at 100 and I'm going to click export and Lightroom is now going to export that one photo or you could have picked multiple photos into that new folder. So the original photo is still there in the raw folder. Obviously it's in Lightroom here, but we're exporting the final photo into the edited folder, which is really nice. Let's bring the size of these thumbnails down a little bit. We don't need them to be as big as they were. There are a couple of other ways that we can actually look through some of our photos. So for example, over here on the left, you see underneath folders where we've seen our tutorial folder one and tutorial folder two, we have collections. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. You can actually create your own collection. So you can create a collection and add actually photos into there. That can be quite useful if you want to collect together landscape photos, portrait photos, street photos, food photos, all that kind of thing. If you want to create different genres and just add photos to those collections, that can be a really useful way to actually group your photos. Otherwise, we can come down to Smart Collections, which is something that uh, Lightroom automatically does for you. You can see things like recently modified, so photos that have been recently picked or modified in some way, so either edited, assigned a five-star rating, assigned a green label, or in this case, picked as well. We can look at five-star photos. So for me, that's a really useful way of quickly being able to see every photo in Lightroom that I've said, I'm happy with this. This is a final completed photo. That's a really useful thing to have available to me. Otherwise I can look at things like colored red. So for example, you can set the color label. Let's go back to tutorial photo one. Let's go filters flagged. Let's set this one, for example, Let's go ahead and set a color label of red. And now when I go down to the collection, the smart collections colored red, you can see that photo is in there. So if you wanted to label things that way, that is gonna be really useful. We can create our own smart collections. So by clicking on this little symbol here, we can obviously create our own collections, but we can create smart collection. That way we can create rules which will put photos into that collection. And we have lots of options for how we want to do that. So we can click here to change a lot of these different things, the rating, pick flag. So we could set a smart collection, which is every picked photo. We could also set things for different locations if you have that in the metadata. Dates, again, from the metadata, so that's automatic. If you're using lots of different cameras, you can again take from that metadata and actually use smart collections to create collections based around which camera that you've been using or which lens, which is really, that can be really useful. And of course, things like the color labels, that's very easy to do. So for example, we can click color label there, is, and then we can click which color we want to actually set as a smart collection for once we color things. So for example, if we go color green and we click create, within this, we're gonna see that now that photo where we colored it green is already in that collection. Any photo we now color green is going into this collection. So that's a really easy and useful way to quickly be able to collect things together. This is actually incredibly intuitive and very easy to get to grips with and the flow of it. It can seem a little bit overwhelming at first, 
But once you start doing it for yourself, you bring those files in, you start collecting them into different folders, create those collections, you'll find that the actual organization within Lightroom is extremely good. It's very, very strong. And it really allows you to pretty much use Lightroom exclusively for your organization. I certainly use it for all of my organization with my photos. And then in the background on my computer, I just have those folders where all the photos actually live. And the great thing, like I said before about Lightroom, it's all non-destructive. The original photo, the original raw photo in these cases exists always untouched, ready to be re-edited or moved or anything you like. So you've got the edited photo and the raw photo. Now there's loads of stuff that we're gonna cover in Lightroom going forward, but I would love to hear from you because you've got great suggestions. Honestly, a lot of these videos have come from your suggestions. So anything you would like to see specifically, I wanna make sure to get to that first before we get to some of the other stuff. So let me know if there's anything specific you'd like to see in our Lightroom tutorials, and I will do my absolute best to get to that as soon as possible. If you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe because there's new content all the time, new tutorials every Tuesday, product reviews as well, loads of stuff. There's loads of stuff, to be honest with you. Loads of different stuff. We've got a full list of all the kit that we use for these videos, for these photos, for all that kind of stuff down in the description. Until next time though, I will see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.